One of the oldest conversations we have within the gaming sphere is the state and status of remakes and remasters within the overall discourse. Are they good? Are they bad? Are they necessary evils in order to get these games on more modernized platforms as well as with more modern features? I'm gonna say a whole lot of things that I feel like are gonna semi-contradict themselves. So if you sense a little bit of conflict in my heart, I want you to know there is conflict in this heart. One of the biggest remakes we got in 2023 was the Resident Evil 4 4 remake. Let me state this forthright. The Resident Evil 4 remake is an incredible game that I just can't seem to play anymore. Now I acknowledge that I'm not like most people who played this game. A good number of diehard Resident Evil fans have probably played this game at least 7, 8, 20 times over at this point and have nothing but glowing things to say about it. For the most part, I agree with every single thing they say. Whether it comes down to the sound design, the game design, all while modernizing it within a relatively new aged package. I agree with it. I think it's fantastic. And yet I still cannot seem to come back to that game. When they released the Operation Ada DLC, was it Operation Ada, is that what it's called? Separate Ways. When they released the Separate Ways DLC for the low, low price of $10, I was surely convinced that I'd be back for at least another playthrough to sort of wrap up all the leftover content that I hadn't been able to scrub through on my initial playthroughs. For those of you familiar with my channel, I love Resident Evil. In fact, the very first video I ever uploaded was about the treasure system within Resident Evil 4 compared to Resident Evil 4 Remake. Granted, I didn't have the nicest of things to say about the treasure system in Resident Evil 4, but to be fair, I also recognize that it was a bit of a personal thing to get mad about, and yet I still couldn't seem to come back to this game. Why? I feel as though there's a weird homogenization effect going on within Capcom when it comes to their remake culture behind these games. It sounds silly, but look at the UI on Resident Evil 2 Remake and compare that directly to Resident Evil 4. Now do the very same thing with those original titles in of themselves. Yeah, they come from completely different eras, right? But that's some of the charm that I think that you lose when you sort of homogenize your game mechanics, you homogenize homogenize the sound, the game engine, all of that stuff. You get this very consistent, samey sort of feeling when it comes to doing that. Resident Evil 2 is not a bad game. Arguably, Resident Evil 2 might go up as one of the greatest remakes of a video game of all time. When you're going from this to this, it's undeniable to admit you get to really appreciate this game on a level that maybe a lot of people don't get to experience anymore. What might have once been a cutting edge graphical showcase on the PlayStation 1 is no longer longer going to be the case on the PlayStation 4. So am I saying because of the fact that these games come from fundamentally different eras, that sort of nuanced differential is the reason why I find these remakes to be bad? Well, first of all, relax it with the accusatory language. I did not say that these games were bad. I just find that they needed to go through certain filters. They needed to be designed in a certain way in order to provide a relatively level and fair interpretive experience through the lens of time to a modern gaming audience and era. But in doing that, you lose a lot of the trimmings, a lot of the cultural ecosystem that these games were developed and come from. Resident Evil 4 had a hell of a lot of cringe, a hell of a lot of cheesiness, as did the original Resident Evil games, but those were fundamentally important to the overall core experience of these games. So in going through the lens of needing these games to sort of homogenize the UI, homogenize the graphics, homogenize the sound design, these systems, these toolkits, all of this stuff, you get a relatively Yakuza sort of experience. Yakuza sort of going through a similar thing in itself. For those of you that are unfamiliar, Sega is taking each and every single Yakuza game and modernizing it and has effectively done so up to the current day, fundamentally rebuilt with new tool sets, new engines, homogenized all together. Those games feature an identical city across each and every entry, meaning that effectively you are getting a lot of copy and paste sort of vibes across the board. Though when you're going through those games, you're sort of looking at the story and some of the cute additions here and there that they add from title to title. In that sense, Resident Evil is very successful. Wherein Resident Evil 2 will place you in Raccoon City Police Department, Resident Evil 4 has you in a completely completely different country, that of Spain. And I don't want you to think that this is effectively me tearing down Resident Evil. At the end of the day, I loved Resident Evil 4, I love the Resident Evil franchise, I'm gonna play all of them when they release Resi 9, when they release Code Veronica Remake, when they release Part 1 Re, 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 Remake, whatever they end up doing, I'm gonna be there for it, because I enjoy these games, I just wish that maybe we got a little bit more risk-taking. The parrying and ducking was cool though. 
In the next few weeks, we're going to get the latest launch from Naughty Dog, that being The Last of Us Part Two Remastered, a PS5 reimagining of the game featuring an exclusive roguelite survival mode, lost levels, full DualSense wireless controller integration, new outfits, guitar free play, and graphical enhancements. In so many words to say, this is effectively a pseudo director's cut remaster of the original game. Interestingly enough, despite the divisiveness of The Last of Us 2, a lot of the back and forth sort of debate whether the game is a fundamental misunderstanding of maybe what made the original game great, it is surprising to see almost no discourse on this game launching. And it's seemingly due to the fact that for a simple $10 upgrade price, the same price we were looking at before for the Separate Ways DLC when we were talking about Resident Evil just a second ago, you get access to all of these upgrades. The notion of a $10 upgrade fee if this game was effectively just the base game, while seemingly out of the Call of Duty playbook, would be pretty upsetting, I think. From the offset, I'd say that a lot of this stuff is really, really compelling, but what I feel like a lot of people tend to forget is the fact that The Last of Us Part 1 releasing was kind of a disaster overall. I believe that the team that's in charge of this remaster is the exact same team that worked on The Last of Us Part 1. A game that launched with relatively little fanfare did also have a surprising number of visual and gameplay bugs that were introduced or carried over from previous iterations of the game's release. By consequence of that, I do wonder if we're going to see any sort of discourse when this game ultimately does launch. I'm sure we're going to have a whole lot of conversations about whether for those of you who haven't played the game, I won't spoil it, some story decisions, or if this game is gonna release relatively unhampered. But I have to admit, wherein you have Resident Evil sort of taking their games and running them through a modern AAA video game filter, you have games like The Last of Us Part Two that are effectively changing nothing, effectively reselling you on the same game that you may have purchased before. I'm pretty sure that people who have bought the game originally through a physical medium are going to effectively have to shell out the full price in order to get this one. Which, fine, I would argue if you pop the disc in, you should be able to have an upgrade prompt in the menu. Maybe that's something that they're gonna look into, maybe that's something they're gonna do. Ultimately, we don't really know how the upgrade process is gonna work, how it's gonna get us from A to Z with that stuff, but I'm sure it is probably something that is inevitably gonna pan out the way that I just described. But to have a game that really doesn't do a whole lot in terms of changes. Yeah, you may look at the roguelite mode, you may look at these things and think like, oh, those are compelling you know, upgrades for that $10 price. I genuinely want how much their inclusion is indicative of a Sony that understands that in launching their game and asking users for that $10 price point, we're aware enough to realize that maybe not including anything on the top while having that $10 upgrade would be just too much of a hard sell and would cause more outrage than actual positive sentiment towards probably one of their most controversial releases of all time. So what does any of that mean? I guess what it means is we'll just have to wait and see if these modes are going to be well integrated, if they're going to be compelling, or if they're going to be slapdash add-ons that are used to justify asking for a measly $10 price point from several million users while also double dipping maybe on the successes of the show and a lot of new PS5 owners in order to resell effectively the same game to us again. This all sort of rolls back into that remake remaster culture of we know that they're bad and yet we continue to engage with them because perhaps they sell us on nostalgia. Perhaps they sell us on convenience. Having some of these games in these newer formats allots us the ability to play them, experience them, and enjoy them with all modern bells and whistles and trimmings and this and this and that. While there are a few remakes that I could say are genuinely the gold standard when it comes to remaking a title, games of which we could probably talk about in a future video if you guys would have interest for that, let me know down below. Frankly, I think The Last of Us Part Two being a $10 DLC add-on that you can get to get better graphics and some new gameplay mechanics is compelling and a good way forward for the industry, but I am apprehensive to its overall quality, its depth, etc, etc. Was this just something they slapped on? I do wonder what sort of discourse we're going to get reintroducing The Last of Us 2 into the zeitgeist of modern game conversation, especially when it's effectively just a $10 DLC. Alright guys, I hope you liked the video. Again, this format is really, really new for me, so I'm doing my absolute best. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know. If you liked it, consider leaving a like. If you disliked it, consider hitting that dislike button. Subscribe if you want to catch more. Uh, what do you guys think about this new remake? Let me know down below. I hope you guys are having a fantastic new year, and I'll catch you on the next one. Stay golden.